Hello and welcome to the Bowers Cambly Show. Today we're going to be focusing on Silicon Pro. What is Silicon Pro? Silicon Pro is a software package that allows the simultaneous communication between various devices, including Silvac hand tools, the Bowers ball mic, Trumos height gauges, and plenty more. Using the software package negates the need for manual data input. This, this enables an increase in efficiencies and reduces potential human error. The Silicon package also indicates to the operator very quickly if a component feature is in or out of tolerance. The values can be reported and saved within the software or externally if you're using a separate SPC system. Let's take a closer look at the software. So once you've started up the software, um, the first screen that appears is the login and we can have various different levels of login. Uh, I've, I've just got the supervisor here but you could have the name of the operator which would appear on the report and you can see down at the bottom here I've got a little green uh, indicator actually telling me that some of the instruments are already connected and that's because of some of the settings that I've got already applied. So I'm just going to put in the login worth mentioning as well with the login there'd be different levels of access to changing settings and things dependent on who's using the system and these can all be fine-tuned so on the left side we have the connection area so um, at the moment you can see uh, that the caliper and the mic are connected so as I'm moving the uh, the reading, you can see that that's giving me a live reading there. So we know it's definitely connected, but I can see that anyway. With the Silvac caliper, the Bluetooth is actually, actually integrated and the data is sent using a button on the top, a trigger. Um, it's quite neat and tidy, no need for any extra accessories. It's the same with all of our hand tools and the ball mic, which we'll move on to later. The Bluetooth is integrated. If I wanted to connect another instrument, for example, the indicator I've got here, I've just got to turn it on, make sure it's on the Bluetooth setting, and I can click on the Bluetooth scan. So I'll just make sure that's on the Bluetooth setting. And you can see it appear there. I can just move that value around slightly so you can see it's moving on live and we can connect. We can connect up to eight, in eight instruments using the Bluetooth dongle, but if I had requirements to check to connect more instruments, that's not a problem. We can add another Bluetooth dongle and we can actually connect a total of 120 instruments if required. So now that that's connected, we can see an indicator at the top telling me that I need to change the batteries on this. So that's another feature of the software. It'll also give me an indication of if the calibration date's running out um, and I can get warnings and alerts to appear linked to that. So we've got a, a range of um, hand tools there connected. So on the main screen, we have uh, some parts. You see I've been doing some, some tests and things, but um, you, you could, you'd have a different part there and the operator will be able to select that, link to that part, depending on where you are within the process, you may have a number of control plans. So I've got a control plan here, which is for the aluminium housing, um, which is actually just the back of the indicator, you can see here. And just to keep things simple, I'm just gonna be using the caliper, but in reality, I could be using a height gauge, I could be using an indicator, I could be using the ball mic. Um, so it's, it's not a problem connecting different instruments. So if we just click start, can pick up the caliper. I've got the component here. The first thing to point out is the part serial number. So I can put in a part serial number, which will obviously be unique to the component. Or if I don't fill that in, I can leave it, and that that field will automatically be populated with the date and time. We can see that the measurement we want to take is the width at 19 mil but it's also telling me what instrument to use so if I did have various instruments a picture there would appear so just helping the uh, the operator out and we've got a live um, 
view there of the result changing. That's so I'm changing that. So I'm just going to go and take that measurement. We can see as I've clicked the trigger, the screen has gone green. Um, we're in tolerance and that value has been stored there. And just work, work my way around now. So we've measured that component. Automatically, the screen can detect that and has restarted the program for that. So I may pick up another component now. I can put in the neat, unique serial number again and, and then work my way through this. But you can see that now that we've gone through one um, sort of one flow of results, um, on, on the screen there, just under the caliper, we've got uh, a, an actual review of the data. So that's going to tell me, and that will continue to populate that as we go through. So that can give the um, operator an idea of, um, you know, trends in relation to uh, a tolerance band. So I'm just going to quickly take a few more. So we've got a bit of data to work with. And 58. So we've got some, some information there. And I'm just going to put in a wrong result now, just to show you what happens. And you can see the trends there appearing um, by the control limits. But if I put in a wrong result now, you can see the screen's gone red. This whole screen would go red, actually, if it was the second or third result, and the other two were OK. So it's, it's given me a, an immediate indicator that something's not right there. If I wanted to um, go back and undo, because I may have accidentally clicked the button, I can just click undo there and remove the previous result. And then we can start again. I can also restart measuring that component if I picked up the wrong one or something like that. So in terms of actually creating a program and a, com a control plan, I'm just going to show you briefly, briefly how easy that is um, before we then move on to the results. So if I go into edit, we've, we've named it. Um, I've got a name there for it. Store data trigger is irrelevant. I've got the trigger on the top here, but I can actually have a foot pedal, a Bluetooth foot pedal, or a key on the keyboard actually to, to signify that. We can change the batch number, which I've just left as automatic. So depending on the number of parts you're doing within a batch, you could ask the, the, the program to actually stop. And then within the actual control plan, all I've done is input a PDF of the technical drawing with some of the measurements I wanted to take a closer look at. And, and I can literally move that around very easily uh, like that. I've added the um, the measurements in, I can fine tune exactly where I want to place these. Um, and then we can also eat very easily just change the size of the results and readings, just like that. And if I go in to one of them, I can rename it, I can change the display type, we can change the nominal, upper or lower tolerance, and, um, and, and just really fine tune whatever, whatever works best, depending on your application. If I want to add another measure, I can just click add, rename that, select the hand tool. So at the moment I've got these four connected so I could have the mic be in the mic to check some, something else um, and just, just add that very easily and, and pop that where I want and, and also the, the actual um, field that it's going to be checking. And if I want to delete something, it's just a case of clicking the delete button. So I'll just pop that back in the middle. So yeah, you can see that you could quite quite quickly create a control plan with various different hand tools all linking into one component. So you're probably wondering where all that data is going. So within the Silicon package, we have um, some analysis software. So uh, these are the different, so over here we have a, a summary of the results and I just open up the filters. I've actually got it set just to review the last eight results. So we've got a mean of those, the nominal value that was measured, the name, the tolerance band, min max, range, CP, CPK value, and your various SPC analysis. So 
this is all within the software package. Um, if I was looking for data of a certain period, I can then change the uh, from and to date. And for the individual feature, I can double click on the diameter and I can actually get a, a curve, a sigma curve. I can identify using the control limits where the results were um, and, and also um, just a basic go, no go, what was in and out of tolerance if you just wanted a basic view. And then these are the individual results in a table. There's lots of information here. Um, you may not need it all, but we can pick and choose what information is saved and then where it's saved as well. So um, if I wanted to export it via Excel, uh, we can just click X, 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 export all. Um, we can save that. That will open up Excel. one from today. So we've got all the information here um, and we can you know delete columns and, and things and, and change things depending on what, what you actually need. Um, you can get it to live export so we could have live data going into an Excel template which is what I've got here um, or we could have it just going into a See, a, we could get it going into another SPC package via a CSV file or something like that. There's lots of other um, features on the software. Um, so if you've got any more questions or would like a more detailed demonstration, please do not hesitate to get in contact. Hopefully speak to you guys soon.